<laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. So today I've got Enchanted Nails by Kelly Hello. with me. She has a YouTube channel, so I'll link it in the description box down below. Go follow and subscribe. She has got some awesome videos up and loads more to come. Thank you, I am a beginner. I don't do much in regards to editing at the moment, but I'm trying. I'm really good. Trying my best. Really good at she likes the same stuff that I like and we use we similar do. stuff. We do. So if you like my videos, you will like Kelly's videos. So today we're going to be doing a Q&A video. We asked on Instagram and YouTube for questions that you have for us to nail text. We're going to do our best and answer those questions to the best of our abilities. We do have cocktails. It's a passion fruit martini. And it's got mango chunks in it. Mango chunks. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. didn't have any ice cubes. No, can't go. <laughs> So it was frozen mango that went in here. Just want to say as well, we'll try our best to answer every single question that we've been asked, but there was a lot of questions. So if a question comes up that is a repeat, we're just gonna skip over it. And also, I'm sorry if we don't get to your question, there is quite a few, so we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Yeah. So first question are, how long are your appointments for gel polish with nail art? Mine are one hour long from the time of the appointment starting always um sometimes i run over depending on what nail art i'm doing but i think what's running over 10 minutes late i'd rather do that and get everything perfect and do the nail art that the client wants rather than like yeah rushing and it not being perfect so yeah if i run over i run over i don't panic about it i would say about the same so about an hour mm -hmm. um for a standard set of gel nails gel polish nails and then with some nail art if i know i've got a couple of clients that i know they have nail art on every single nail and it adds about 15 minutes to half an hour i will schedule in an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half depending on because i have a couple of clients that like extra, a lot of nail art so if i know in advance i'll schedule a little bit longer time but on average, an hour, an hour and ten minutes at the most. Yeah. Your reasons for wearing gloves during appointments. I'm understuck. <laughs> Can I start again? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Your reasons for wearing gloves during appointments. I'm undecided whether to start using them myself. I wear gloves now. I used to not wear gloves. And... I now wear gloves to protect my own nails from getting ruined. Mm -hmm. And also to protect myself from getting... Is it contact comment <laughs> contact dermatitis <laughs> from getting contact dermatitis because yeah, you can mm. build up a reaction to the gel polish you're using acetone anything really so yeah just to protect my nails and my skin and my hands so I actually do have contact dermatitis because I didn't wear gloves from the very start and I'm very messy with my polish. Um, so my skin's built up a reaction to it. on my right hand it's particularly bad so now I always have to wear gloves so I probably would advise to start wearing gloves as soon as possible so that you don't actually get that because it's a horrible reaction to have it's very itchy it's very painful and mm. yeah it's not great I'm currently training to be a nail technician have you got any tips to be a good technician work really really hard yeah. when you think you can't work any harder then work harder than that mm -hmm. um, be flexible with your times as much as possible and your days of, of work because beggars can't be choosers and when you first start you don't have any clients yeah try and work around your clients and just practice 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 i would say yeah i would say practice makes perfect and don't try once and give up you'll probably not get it right the first time mm -hmm. you need to try at least three four times before you get the hang of it and then to get good at it you need to try another 10 to 15 times work hard work really hard and it's gonna you've got to invest a lot of time and money mm -hmm into what you're going to become i think nail techs make it look really easy and actually it's not. it's not people think it's just sitting at home all day painting nails and that's not the case it takes no. a lot to like become a full-time nail tech you may say <coughs> say one day you only have two clients that's two one hour appointments say or two two hour appointments but that's not that it just as soon as that client walks in, it doesn't start and end as soon as they start, come in and go. You've got to arrange the appointments. That's time. That's technically working. You've got your social media and advertising if you do all that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of extra time that you don't even think about to do. So it's a lot of time and energy. But yeah, work your butt off. Work, work, work. What is your favourite building gel? The gel bottle ink, builder in a bottle, or the gel bottle ink, gel pot. Both of them are really good. I use the builder in a bottle for short extensions, and then I use the builder in a pot, the gel pot, for doing longer extensions. The difference between is the gel pot is a hard gel and it's file off. 
Builder in a Bottle is Soak Off. I use the Builder in a Bottle, the Soak Off. I'm not trained in hard gel, but I do love the gel bottle, Builder in a Bottle. Definitely can't beat it. Which do you prefer, Premier Gel or the Gel Bottle Ink? The Gel Bottle Ink, but not for any reason that Premier Gel have done anything wrong, because they most certainly haven't, and the polishes I have of theirs are really, really nice. I just think that the Gel Bottle are that much on top of their game right now, especially with packaging, advertising, naming their polishes, all sorts of things. Yeah. I just feel like their game is, like, upped slightly. Yeah, I agree. I think... Premier Gel just has numbers. Um, I think they are starting to introduce names mm -hmm. for their polishes, but all of the Gel Bottle Link polishes are consistent and they've named it. They've got a really good social media account and they're, they're promoting a bit. It's really good, really, really strong. <clears throat> and they come out with collections together. They're just, yeah, I would say they're that much better. They've just, nothing wrong with Premier Gel. I love their colors. I've got some, I use their top coat as well as the Gel Bottle Link's top coat. They're comparable, they're really good. Yeah, I just, if I had to choose one or the other, it would be the gel bottle link. Yeah, same. What do you love and hate most about being a nail tech? P.S. Love your work. Aww. Thank you. That's nice. It's real nice. You've got to answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting about this. Oh my gosh. Okay. What I love most about being a nail technician is, should we say top three? This is going to be really hard. Who like three things? The first three things we think of. Yeah, okay. The first three things that come to mind. Love being able to work from home in the comfort of my own home. Second thing, I love the people, talking to people every day, all day. It's really social and I've built up such good relationship with my clients that I consider them my friends now. And third thing is being creative and doing something different on every set of nails. I literally hate you, are doing all the ones that I was gonna say. <laughs> Damn it. So another thing that's a little bit different is that I love being artistic and doing something different every single hour. Mm -hmm. It's never the same. Yep. And I get to let all my creative energy, energy out, which is really nice. Um, I also think that building relationships with my clients has mm -hmm. been really, really good and something I'm really proud of. Yeah. Um, and yeah, working from home is a blessing, not gonna lie. Okay, and then three things, hate, I'm trying to let it just not think about it, let it just come off my head. Three things I hate. Hate is a strong word, first of all. It is. I don't hate anything. Sometimes things can be difficult. Working from home can be difficult in the sense that it gets to the end of the week and I realise that I haven't left the house from Monday to Friday. That's not good. It's expensive. Being a nail technician is expensive, product cost is really expensive, and keeping up with nail trends and new products, it's an expensive, it's a big investment. Third thing is the effect of working as a nail tech 24-7 as your full-time job it has on your body. <laughs> You're going to end up being hunchback, your hands are going to be like crippled. The pain that I get through my neck, my shoulders, my hands, my hips, my knees from sitting in that position and looking down all day, it's a lot and it, it, it can be tough. Yeah. It's not just sitting behind a desk all day. Ours were pretty much the same. Yeah, ours were pretty much the same. We're like the same person. We're twins. We are. <laughs> yeah. What is your favourite gel polish brand? I don't have one, can I do a couple? Yeah, top three then. So, the Gel Bottle Ink, Madame Glam. It's hard because I do use quite a few. I'm gonna say IBD, I do really like IBD. And Pro Gel, sorry, no, I'm gonna swap IBD, IBD. I do like it, but I'm gonna say Super Nails Pro Gel, love it. I would say Magpie Beauty, the Gel Bottle Link, Ugly Duckling, Madame Glam. Boom. Do your clients mind you using different gel polish brands? Mine are so brand loyal. My clients don't mind me using different brands. They love the different brands I use. I have my main four or five that I love and use and they like to have a selection of colours, a big selection of colours. So by having a few different brands, it means I can have a ton of different colours. I think that different brands offer different things. So it's good to have a wide selection of colours for your clients. So yeah. 
yeah how to make work quicker any tips or tricks i find that hard, a hard question to answer because i honestly believe that the quality of your work should come before speed you should be doing everything you can to make your work perfect before your speed mm -hmm. but what i do is um my appointments are on the hour every hour so i like break down my hour in my mind and then try and get certain goals by certain times practice when you first start out you definitely won't be quick and the, when you first start out you shouldn't be thinking about time you should be thinking about quality over quantity mm -hmm. if you're only having two clients a day and you're spending three hours on those two clients you want to give them a good outcome for them to come back so i think speed comes with time it does speed comes with time and, and confidence yeah so don't rush take your time Aha, good question do you think that the silicon practice hands are worth it yes mm -hmm. I do, but make sure you invest in a good one. There are lots of different ones out on the market and they're all roughly around the same price from about £100 to I'd say £300. So definitely do your research into the practice hands and find the right one for you. And it can be really, really, really beneficial to help you practice with loads of different things, acrylic application, gel polish, nail art, photographing different nail art designs to show your clients. It can be really, really helpful and really beneficial. I agree. I absolutely love my red iguana practice hand, but I use it just for practicing nail art designs that maybe my clients I haven't perfected, so that you know I don't put them on my clients yet because I haven't perfected them. Yeah. Or just designs that I can't get anyone to have at that given time, and I just really want to have a go at it. Yeah. I'll just I'll use it for that. So I really like it. I think it's really, really helpful, mm. especially for beginners yeah. to get their like painting nice to make sure mm -hmm. the consistency of the polish and the cuticle area. I think it's a really good, yeah, really good, really good practice. Oh, can I touch it? Yeah. Oh, this is my hand. Mm -hmm. We're just comparing practice hands. We are. <clears throat> Ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do this. Who or what inspired you to do nails? Also, what's your fave bit about your job? Love you. Love you too. Um, Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, for me, I was 25 years old. I was not enjoying my full-time office job. I wasn't really passionate about it and I was looking to find a career that I was really passionate about and I had really no idea what I was going to do. So I first got into doing nails because I went for a treatment at a salon in the town that I live in and I saw some of the girls in there doing nails and it looked really, really interesting and really, really fun. So in the end, I ended up getting a job there and I worked there for three years and my passion for nails just grew and grew and grew to the point where I'd like to start my own business. So that's what I've done. I now work from home and I absolutely love it. And what was the second part of the question? Oh, what's your favourite bit about doing nails? I honestly do think it's the amount of friends and relationships that I've now got from doing nails like my clients aren't just my clients like I genuinely care about them and their mm. lives and they genuinely care about me yeah. and it's building relationships I think it's nice yeah. what inspired me to do nails I basically wanted to get my nails done when I was a lot younger and looked around and around mm -hmm. and what I wanted from nails was all the funky nail art type things and I didn't want to go into a non-standard salon. Um, so I thought, right, I'm gonna go on a course, train myself to do them. I love, I'm an art student, so I love arty stuff. So that side of it really just inspired me, just in itself. So I did a course and started doing my own nails, started doing my mum's nails, friends and families, found a real love and passion for it. Didn't think it could be a career and a full-time job. I thought it was just something that I could enjoy as a hobby and a passion and a love. And then it just evolved mm -hmm. into a full-time client base. And because of that, I never advertised. I never pushed for clients or did deals or anything like that. It just came through recommendations. So it's it was people that I kind of knew to start off with. And then their friends came to me and their friends of friends. And gradually I built up a full-time clientele and they're all friends and i love it i love what i do in order can you rank the gel bottle magpie premier gel polishes for me magpie and the gel bottle link are together for me 
and then Premier Gel sits underneath them. For me, the gel bottle are at the top, and then I would say Magpie and Premier Gel are together underneath. So it's not like a worst one out of all three. No. It's just that I don't have that many Premier Gel and Magpie polishes so i haven't got a lot to compare to at the moment but maybe i can revisit that later on i get quite anxious before a new client any tips love your channel by the way thank you very much i'm very very fortunate that i am a confident person and i don't actually ever get anxious when i see new clients anymore but when i did when i very first started i would literally just chat and I would have my certain set questions out that I would ask, especially if it's a new client. I would say, so where do you work? If it's near Christmas, I'll say, what are you doing for Christmas? What, if it's in the summer, I'll say like, what are you doing for summer holidays? That kind of thing. Mm. And just try and get to know the person because once you feel that you know them, I feel like the anxiousness kind of goes away, but I actually don't get anxious anymore. So I'm quite lucky. When I first started, I did get quite anxious with new clients coming in. I'd get really scared with new clients booking in. So if someone messaged me on the day and said, do you have any appointments available today or the next day? I'd say no, even if I did have a spare afternoon or no clients booked in the next day, it'd be too soon for me. I'd need some time to prepare myself for a new client. So I used to be like, oh no, I don't have an appointment for another week so that I could get used to the idea that I had a new client coming in. If I do take on new clients every now and again, I'm definitely a lot more confident than I used to be and like you say there's some questions that I always ask and I'm quite a bubbly chatty person and when I do get anxious I just chat a lot yeah. and don't stop. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good to just talk your way through the anxiousness. Yeah. Just talk your way through. Yeah. That, I think you're more personable then. Yeah, 100%. And I think it will take your mind off, like your mind won't be working thinking oh my god what do they think of me and yeah. am I doing the right thing and do they like me if you're just asking about them yeah then you know they'll ask back about you and that's how the relationship builds yeah exactly what are the best lint free <laughs> stop it are you ready yeah you're not are you you're gonna do something stupid what are you doing <laughs> nothing <laughs> it looks like <laughs> loo roll <laughs> okay <clears throat> what are the best what are the best lint-free wipes? What are the most pigmented metallic stamping polishes at a good cost? Okay, so the best lint-free wipes are these bad boys. They are. We both yes, agree. We get the same. <laughs> yeah, we both agree. So they look like this. And they just come on a roll. And then you just turn them off like Yay. this. And they're really good. They come on a massive roll like this. And they're awesome. They last forever. The most pigmented metallic stamping polishes. I like the Barry M ones that you gave me. Yeah. Born Pretty have got a really good silver, but their gold's like a yellowy gold, so I'm not really a fan of the gold, but the silver's really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, Clear Jelly Stamp have got some really yeah. nice ones as well. And Moyu. And <clears throat> Hit the Bottle. And Hit the Bottle. I love There's it. Loads Calypso of Gold, ones. Hit the yeah. Bottle. Beauty. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, baby. Oh, hello, baby. Oh, you haven't hugged with your mum. Oh, it's the camera. <laughs> Oh, you are. But Hashtag not sponsored. I mean, for the cute bottles alone, why not? And they're minis. Stay hydrated, nail tax. It's got a hibiscus on it. Mm. I love hollow glitter. What is your favourite? We're talking loose glitters. They would be the Magpie Supercharged Hollow Glitters. <laughs> Okay, right, wait. Do you want to go get them and show them? Shall I? Yes. I'm going to get them. Yes, let's. They're also my favourite holographic glitters. There's six supercharged holographic glitters. They came out with the first original three, which is Faith, Charity and Hope. And I have here the silver, which is Dotty, the lilac, which is Sharon, and the pinky red, which is Delia. So they've got six in total now, and they're the most holographic things ever. They're beautiful. I want to bath in them. Yeah, that'd be an expensive bath. It really, really would. What's the biggest advice you would give someone starting out doing nail art and stamping? If you could choose one brand of gel polish and glitter to work with forever, what would it be? And what's your favourite food? So should we start with the first question? Yeah. What's the biggest advice you would give someone starting out doing nail art and stamping? So mm. I would say experiment with different products. Try things out. It's a lot of experimental time and have fun. 
Um, try loads of different products. You will have to invest a little bit of money into it, but luckily nail art is not too expensive. Try different colours and sit down for a day and just play with different things so don't get too stressed out. Yeah, and I would say on top of what you've just said, because I totally agree with that, be patient, like your nail art skills won't be great when you first start, it will take time to build it up and it will take practice, but be yeah. patient with yourself, praise yourself on the things you are doing well. Yeah. If you could choose one brand of gel polish and glitter to work with forever, what would it be? Magpie Glitter. Yes, I agree. I'll answer the glitter part, you can yeah. answer the gel part. Magpie Glitter. Yeah, I do agree with the glitter and, oh, this is really hard. Yeah, I, I really, find that really hard. I really do like a lot of brands, I but at choose. the moment, I just feel that the gel bottle are, like, way above everyone else. So I have to say them at the moment, but that's subject to change. Yeah. And the last part of this question, what is your favourite food? Can we do a sweet and savoury each? Yeah. Yeah. You go first. Sweet, I would have to say chocolate. I do love chocolate, and that is in all forms, like ice cream, cake. You know, basically, I don't discriminate when it comes to chocolate. Yeah. And my favourite savoury, I do love pasta. So pasta. my favourite savoury is pasta. We are twins. I could eat pasta for breakfast, lunch, and dinner Me with different too. toppings, whatever, plain with just some salt. And then favourite sweet. <clears throat> Fruit, and that's really weird, but I love fruit. If you weren't doing nails, what other job do you think you'd be doing right now? I think that's really, really difficult to say, and I don't have a definitive answer because the jobs that I was doing before, I didn't mind doing them, but there was nothing I was really in love with, and I hadn't really found my passion yet, so I can't really tell you. I would most likely still be in office work because, yeah. I didn't mind doing it, but it wasn't my passion. I would probably be doing makeup. I did makeup for a while when I started out doing nails. And when I was doing nails on the side, I had a full-time job with makeup. But I would probably now be doing more prosthetics and things like that. Makeup in that kind of area. Okay, we are done. We are done. We are done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this style video if you enjoyed kelly being my lovely guest give it a thumbs up Yay. and comment down below share the love and go and follow kelly on her instagram and her youtube channel i'll leave both linked in the description box below so you can find her super easily she's fabulous Yay. and you've been an amazing guest well thank you so much for having me i've really appreciated it. it's been so much fun i've never done like a face-to-face -face camera thing before it's been really fun it's really fun yeah. and i've got about an hour and a half's worth of footage because we laughed too much we did let isabel know if you want more of these because it would be an excuse for us to meet up yes we can meet up loads more and do more videos we if can. you've got any video ideas for us both to do together we mm -hmm. can do that as well so mm -hmm. yeah thank you so so much for watching have a lovely rest of your day your evening your week your month and i'll see you in my next video bye